Hello, my name is Simon Eyes and welcome to another Simon Eyes Guide video. Today, we are going over what very well could be the best gold farm in all of Wrath of the Lich King. We're taking a level 80 rogue into Karazhan to mow down as many enemies as we can using fan of knives and vendor everything we get. Extensive testing on the Wrath of the Lich King beta has shown this farm to produce 700 to 900 gold per hour of farming. Let's get right into it with what you're going to need to make this happen on your rogue. First, you're going to want to have a particular talent and glyph setup. The main thing we're doing here is utilizing the power of Fan of Knives, and our talent and glyph choices are built around that. We'll go into Assassination just enough to grab focused attacks, and go into Combat to gain Blade Flurry and Adrenaline Rush. For glyphs, we have Fan of Knives, Evasion, and Adrenaline Rush. Fan of Knives glyph is obvious. That's where the majority of our damage comes from, so plus 20% on that is a no-brainer. Evasion and Adrenaline Rush help us to be able to live for longer and be able to finish off the enemies we are fighting. You can find the talent and glyph setup linked in the video description. For the gear setup, the requirements are very low. At a minimum, you're looking for two slow weapons, speed 2.6 or slower, preferably fist weapons, to synergize with close quarters combat talent, but having them be slow is the more important factor. Both of these weapons will be enchanted with Life Ward, which is a new enchant from Wrath of the Lich King that gives a chance on hit to heal yourself. Put instant poison on both of these weapons as well. The slow weapon speed is desirable because it increases the chance per hit to trigger instant poison and life ward. As for the rest of your gear, you'll be able to complete this farm with just dungeon blues. The better your gear gets, the less likely you are to die and the faster you will kill things, but high level epic gear is certainly not required. I suggest having healing potions available to help with not dying. So let's get down to Karazhan and get some gold in our pockets. Our goal here is to kill two large packs of enemies, then zone out, sell everything at the vendor outside Karazhan, reset, and do it again. To start with, we'll run up the stairs and pull a few packs in the ballroom using any thrown weapon. You can also use grenades or the hand-mounted pyro rocket from engineering if you prefer, but a simple thrown weapon works just fine. As soon as the mobs start hitting you, you'll need to use evasion and start casting Fan of Knives. Casting Fan of Knives will both heal you and damage them, so casting it is necessary to stay alive once you start taking damage. You should gradually back up and move around these pillars to force the enemies to come to you, otherwise some will stand far away and do ranged attacks without getting hit by your Fan of Knives. If you find yourself without energy to cast Fan of Knives, use that time to cast Adrenaline Rush or Blade Flurry. After most of the enemies are dead, you may have some elites left over. If you haven't used Adrenaline Rush or Blade Flurry yet, do it now to finish off the elites. With far fewer enemies around you, you won't heal as much from each cast of Fan of Knives, and this is the dangerous part of the farm where you can die if you are unlucky. If it isn't looking good, just vanish and let the elites reset. Loot the stuff you killed already and move on. It is useful to have a speedy looting add-on like Speedy Auto Loot or Leatrix, as well as binding Interact with Target to the mouse wheel and turn on Auto Loot to default. These things combined save a lot of time while looting the dozens and dozens of enemies you'll be killing. I'll link the speedy auto loot add-on I use in the video description. Once the first pull is completed, you'll move into Moro's room. If you're quick with looting the enemies, your evasion may still be on cooldown and you'll have to wait for it to be ready. You can stand in the middle of the main dining table. Once evasion is ready, shoot this enemy on the left, then sprint into this corner on the right. With Evasion up, you can spam Fan of Knives to kill everything and heal yourself. Just like with the first pull, if there are some elites at the end, you can use Blade Flurry or Adrenaline Rush to kill them, or just vanish and ignore them. In this pull, I use Sprint to help get into position quickly because I don't have Nitro boosts on this character. If I had Nitros, I would use the Nitros to get into position and then use the Sprint to help exit the instance faster. After this group is dead and looted, run right out of the instance, and lucky for us, there's a vendor right at the entrance. You could probably earn a little more gold by disenchanting the greens or auctioning some of these items, but there is not a mailbox nearby to enable sending those items away. We're tight on inventory space, so I just vendor everything and keep moving. Karazhan is a raid, so it is not subject to the 5 instance per hour rule. We can go in and out of Karazhan and reset it as many times as we want per hour. Even with this very basic gear, I was able to pull 700 to 750 gold per hour from Karazhan on the Wrath of the Lich King beta. Generally, increasing your gear level will make this farm slightly faster and more consistent with higher stamina, higher avoidance, and higher damage output. Beyond just general gear improvements, there are a few special items you can acquire that help make this farm faster. 
My ideal setup for this farm is to use three piece death dealer set and the fell striker dagger in my offhand combined with any slow fist weapon like greed, Kel'Thuzad's reach or calamity's grasp in the main hand with mirror of truth and essence of the gossamer trinkets. With that setup, I've been able to get runs just under three minutes if I'm lucky and consistently around three minutes, 30 seconds. That setup allows me to pull around 850 to 900 gold per hour of Karazhan farming on the Wrath of Lich King beta. Pre-raid best in slot plus death dealer plus fell striker is the setup being used in the run on screen now. Let's talk about those items and a few other special upgrades you can get. The first is the death dealer level 60 set from the Temple of Ankaraj raid. The desirable part of this set is the three piece bonus that reduces evasion cooldown by one minute, taking it from a two minute cooldown to a one minute cooldown. This will eliminate the waiting time between the two pulls, saving around 45 seconds from each run. You're looking to equip whatever three pieces of the set incur the smallest stat loss compared to your regular gear. So usually that is the boots and the shoulders, then either the chest, head, or legs, depending on which of your regular chest, head, or leg items is weakest. On this character, I have a Wrath of Lich King item level 200 chest and legs, and only a Sunwell helmet. So I picked the boots plus shoulder plus helmet for the Death Dealer set. Another good item you can get, which can actually be farmed solo, unlike the Death Dealer set, is the Fell Striker Dagger. Yes, the Fell Striker Dagger from Upper Black Rock Spire, level 60 dungeon. Each enemy hit by Fan of Knives with this weapon gives a chance to trigger its effect. So when you are fighting 20 or more enemies at once, that is a lot of chances to trigger and you can very reliably have this buff up. The guaranteed critical strikes not only increases your damage output, but also synergizes extremely well with your focused attacks talent, making it so you only run out of energy after almost all the enemies are dead. Fell Striker is too low level to receive a life ward enchant, so it will have a mongoose enchant instead. If you've got Fell Striker, you'll have enough energy through focused attacks to cast Fan of Knives on pretty much every global cooldown. If you do not have Fell Striker, you may want other sources of extra energy. Rod of the Sun King from Tempest Keep is a great option and is a nice slow weapon with high damage per hit and high chance to trigger instant poison per hit due to its slow speed. The proc effect from Rod will help boost up your energy and keep you casting Fan of Knives as often as possible. Another source of extra energy is the Storm Shroud level 50 crafted armor set. The three piece bonus can trigger from Fan of Knives and help you get to that point of casting Fan of Knives on almost every global cooldown. Just like with the Death Dealer set, you want to choose the pieces that incur the smallest stat loss. Usually that means shoulder plus gloves, then either chest or leg, depending on the quality of your regular chest and leg items. The Trinket Essence of the Gossamer is another unnecessary but useful item to have. It offers a huge amount of stamina and the damage absorption effect it gives is quite a bit of effective health. Using this trinket is a fine choice to increase survivability. The Dark Moon card Heroism Trinket I think is generally not desirable. It provides some healing, but the healing it provides is about one fifth that of a single life ward enchant and it is just not significant. I think you are better off using something that boosts your damage like Mirror of Truth. I haven't had a chance to test Siphon of the Nathrezim, but I think it could be good for additional healing. The 2.8 speed on the weapon is very nice as well, offering a higher chance per hit to trigger instant poison and life ward enchant, as well as better attack power scaling. If I had it, I would try using Siphon in the main hand with life ward and Fell Striker with Mongoose in the offhand. There are more mobs you could pull in each run, but I've found that going up to the balcony and the opera hall areas for those extra mobs adds too much extra time to each run and overall decreases efficiency. It is possible I just didn't optimize that route to the same degree I optimized the two pull route, but my impression is that the two pull route shown in the video is superior. This is a pretty great farm and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching the Simonize Show. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Can't wait for more sweet videos? Links are on screen that you can watch right now. Be sure to join the Discord server and pop by on Twitch to catch me live. Links to both are in the video description. Thank you for watching and have a great day.